Okay guys, so uh, welcome back to another one of my videos. This one is probably going to be a bit shorter than normal. Um, one, uh, just before we start, thanks again for everyone for subscribing to my channel and anyone that joins me on my lives on a Monday night. I really appreciate you giving up your time to spend a bit of it with, my, with me on a Monday evening. So if anyone uh, wants to join in, uh, we do generally talk about a bit of everything, scrap uh, mainly. Uh, scrap value, what we're all doing, what's uh, goal recovery, stuff like that. It's more main topics. Um, so if anyone wants to join us, they can feel free to join us. So for today's video, what I'm going to be doing is making stannous chloride. So if anyone doesn't know what that is, that's used for testing gold. So it's one of the essentials um, that you will need if you're going to go into this e-waste recovery and you're going into your gold recovery. It's very simply made. Um, and it'll it's great so that you're not losing any gold in your liquids you can test your liquid to see if there's still any precious metals inside of it after you've gone through the process so before you dump it or well not dump it before you put it into your into your um, buckets for disposal over time well, um, yeah, and I'll show you how I deal with that later and in other videos to come but um, before you get to that stage you can just to make sure you've got as much of the precious metals out of the um, the liquid as possible um, stannous chloride will give a is a good way of testing it it'll give you a, 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 an indicator of whether there's still as precious metals such as gold in the solution um, so that's what i'm going to make today on this so first off i have a few little things here i want to run through i'll just be using that for dropping in the um htl well first off actually we'll start with the two main ingredients to it two main ingredients will be tin so that is 99.95% tin. Okay, so there's just tin shot. Uh, I'll be using that. I also have my hydrochloric acid in here. I will be using this as where, where the solution will be made inside. Okay, I will be using um, a bottle afterwards. So we have a bottle for putting the uh, solution in. So usually it'd be a brown bottle, but I can't find that at the moment. So I'm just using that bottle as my uh, thing I'll have my gloves when I'm dealing with the acid. I'll use this for weighing out the tin This is if anyone's looking this is a stirrer uh, a Hot plate stirrer which um, will get the solution to work quicker or get the thing to work quicker and this is the Little uh, stirrer itself the magnetic stirrer inside of it. So first off I'll just stick on the old gloves because even though I probably um, Have done this loads of times and never spilt any this will be the one time that it'll happen. So I'll just stick on some gloves. Again, if you're not too sure on what you're doing, don't do it. Uh, if you're not familiar with what you're doing, don't go near it, stay away from it. Um, and uh, until you've done enough research and stuff like that. Again, if you haven't already checked out my safety videos on some of the safety gear that I use when I'm doing the acid recovery, please make sure you do, uh, it's very important. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out 12 grams of tin. So we'll just get that set to zero. So we have it at zero and we have done grams. So we're going to just measure out 12 grams of this tin shot. Now you can melt it down and make it thinner and it'll go quicker. There we go. 12 grams, so it doesn't take much for my solution. And what I'm going to use in is uh, 50 millilitres of um, hydrochloric acid. So what I'll do then is I'll just put the tin in here and I'll also drop in the little stirrer in with it at the moment. So that's it all in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in 50 millilitres of HCl. So again, I could use this to measure it out, which I probably will actually. So we'll go back here. And we'll reset that to zero. And we'll change it to millilitres. Millilitres and zero. Okay, so I'm going to do 50 of them. So we'll see what we get in this one first. 39, 44, 45. So we'll just pour that in first. And I did spill some, if you can see there, some of it spilled. So. So 
So I just need five millimeters more. Well, six won't make a difference. One. Okay, so you can see that's in there. The so you can can't really see any reaction at the moment. But what I'll do then is we'll put it onto the hot plate. And I just want to wipe that little bit up. <coughs> so there's Put the jar plate on the jar again with the hydrochloric in it. Okay, so that's done. Now we'll bring this a bit closer to us. Okay, so we have two switches on it. One is for heat and one is for power. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just switch on the power. So that should be it on and we'll just see, you can see the magnet spinning around in there. So that's going to, we'll try and get the bits in there. So, and then what I'm going to do is just add a small little bit of heat. So again, the magnet, I can increase the speed. Turn it down a bit and we're going to turn on the heat and we're going to put it down on low heat first. So we're going to let that just work away and we'll come back when the uh, tin has been dissolved. So that can work away there, it'll do. Just be careful with the heat, that's all. You want to be very careful with your heat that you don't increase it too hot and then uh, end up cracking your glassware. Uh, that's heat resistant glassware meant to be, but again, a lot of the stuff that you buy online, you're relying on them telling you it is heat resistant. So sometimes I put a little catch jar underneath here um, so that it's not directly uh, getting the full blast of heat and that way then it'll um, it'll go a bit quicker or it can, can increase the heat a small bit and um, hopefully if it does crack it'll be caught, any of the liquids will be caught in the secondary jar so that it doesn't uh, spill all over your, your gear so I'm just seeing if that's heating up it is, yeah I can feel the heat coming there now on that so we're going to let that work away there for the moment, I'll just give it another angle here and we'll try and zoom in. So you can see, again, let's put that in there. Now if I put the tin down, so the, um, <laughs> it's having a little dance for itself. If we can get it into the middle, it should work better. So, oh. there we go. But the tin is out on the side now, so. But we we'll let it work away there um, and let it stir it away, and we'll come back once we have it uh, dissolved, because there's no point you watching all this. I could leave it here for a couple of hours and get plenty of watch time, but um, I don't think too many people will stay here for a couple of hours while that's working away, because that can, that can take, depending on. Uh, up to up to 13 hours to actually dissolve it fully and again what it being the little bits of shot lead it can take a bit longer if I melted the lead or melted the tin and put it into strips it probably would have worked a bit better but I just decided to leave the shot as it was uh, there and let it work away so we'll pause the video there I won't let you sit all the way through that and we'll come back once that's done okay guys well, um, I just said, well, I can show you there as well. I can show you the reaction. Um, as you can see there now, that is reacting. Um, I've changed into a different different type jar, a bit more flatter jar, um, which will work. It seems to be working a small bit better for me. So you can see the reaction along here. You can see the bubbling of the actual tin. Uh, so as it's bubbling it away there, the hydrochloric acid is dissolving the tin into solution, and that will make my stannous. Um, Stannis um, chloride. So 
So um, I've put a little wash glass up on top as well, so no vapours are getting out, and that's why you can see the vapours around here, so the vapours are actually falling down into it. So we can just turn on the magnet again. So I just wanted to show you the reaction of the bubbles there on the actual uh, tin so that you can get a better look at it before we get to the next stage of it. Um, so it's it's bubbling away there nicely, uh, working away. So don't forget guys to hit the old like button, hit the share. Um, don't forget to check out my, my lives as well, which is great that people are checking them out. Um, and I really appreciate that as I said already and check out some of my other previous videos um, I'm still working on getting my watch time up so anyone that watches away there which it is good I really appreciate that so the reaction is fairly going there I will also keep topping this up with a bit of nitric not nitric sorry hydrochloric acid keep saying nitric by mistake hydrochloric acid I want to try and keep it around the uh, 50 milliliters so every so often you may, it won't take much, it might only take five or maybe four or five milliliters of a top up um, every so to, by the, the whole process just to keep it at the 50 milliliters so I'm left with 50 milliliters of stannis. Again, if you can store it in a darker uh, jar, uh, like a brown glass jar uh, or bottle, it will last longer. Um, so, but at the moment I can't find my one, I think I... I've misplaced it, um, so I'm going to have to get some more. But for the moment, I'll just put it into a normal little bottle and I'll store it somewhere dark so that it lasts longer. Uh, a dark, cool, dry place usually makes it last a bit longer. Um, so we'll let that work away. We'll come back when that's all dissolved. Um, at the moment, I have no gold to test. I'm, I have a few working on a few of them at the moment. So, But in a future video, you'll see me using this Stannis Chloride to do the tests. Uh, and you'll see the reaction again any that's familiar with the um, actual gold recovery will know already the, how this works and stuff but anyone getting new into it this is what you need it's one of the essentials for testing your gold but always keep it fresh always keep updating it if you haven't done it in a couple of months or maybe a year and you have some left there I don't bother using that to be honest I just um, I make a fresh batch you know you could use that if the hydro, if the hydrochloric act uh, is still active and you can melt um, or dissolve a bit more tin and add a bit more hydrochloric acid and that should work away all right i found that worked away all right so i don't need to dispose of the whole lot i can just add to it but um i, I like to make a new batch every uh, every couple of months so that um i any that i have is fresh and i know it's working perfect and again make sure that when you're getting your tin that you're getting this purest quality you can it's going to lead to less less uh, false positives and less hassle when you're using it so that that there is 90 99.95 pure tin so it cost a bit extra but it's it's well worth it so i'll let that work away guys and um we'll see what it's like at the end okay guys so i said i just checked back after a couple of hours um so i think we have about maybe six hours have elapsed. So it has got a little bit smaller, the um, the tin. Uh, again, if I said to be already, if I'd melted this and cut it into little tin strips or something like that, um, it'd go a lot quicker than the actual shot, the lead shot. But um, I'll leave that run for another few hours um, until it's all dissolved. You say sometimes it can take um, a couple of days to do it, sometimes 16 hours, it all depends. If I do it into the strips, I usually get it done in 16 hours. Um, but the lead shot usually takes a bit longer so but I'll let that work away so the next time we come back it should be all dissolved and be ready for filtering so again and just get that mixer into the center and get it down there and you can see the shot there uh, so um, hopefully when we come back it'll be uh, a lot thing in the meantime uh, just so you know I'm not just Dawson um, when I'm not on camera I was doing these mobile, more mobile foam boards. So we've got all them mobile foam boards uh, in that big tub. So that's a large tub of mobile foam boards. I'll just get the camera out here so you can actually see it better. So you can see there, big tub of mobile foam boards. So I have um, cleaned off all them and they're ready for filtering. And then I have a couple of buckets of acid that need to be filtered. This is just what I spray off, the, off them. I just have it in here so you can Actually, if I zoom out a bit, oh, wrong way. 
So you can see there, and if I can get a close up when I mix it around, you'll see the gold flakes float around inside it. So um, that all has to be filtered out yet um, and ready for the next stage. So they'll be added to my mobile phone once that I'm working on at the moment. So um, when you guys come back, we should be back to filtering the um, acid uh, that I've left in there for the uh, stannous chloride. And um, that way then we'll be ready to, um, ready to use that in the future then for when I want to do some gold recovery and test the liquids to see if there's any gold in the solution or what's happened. So it's very important you have this if you're going to be doing gold recovery. Um, so we'll, when we come back, we'll hopefully have it all dissolved and ready to um, filter it. Okay guys, so I just said I'd pop back and show you the progress. Um, it's been about, oh, let me see how many hours since I started this. I'd say about uh, 15, 16 hours. Um, now I didn't have the heat on it uh, all that time. I just have the heat on every so often. I put the heat on and let it go. But it's nearly done. You can see here now there's just a few little bits left. Um, and they're bubbling away there. They so should be finished within the next hour, I'd be thinking. Um, and it'll be ready for filtration. So um, it's, it's, um, it's working along there nicely. Because um, if you compare... We'd say that was the size of the little shots that were put into it and you can see the little sizes of them there now. So the heat turned up there again, I'll just let that work away for the la last hour and it should be ready for filtration. So we'll come back and we'll uh, check the filtration, um, well we'll do the filtration um, and it'll be ready then to use for, uh, in my, well I'll put it into a little bottle and it'll be ready to use then for when I, when I want to do my testing in future videos. Um, you'll see me using this um, stannis to check the uh, liquids to see if there's any gold uh, left inside of the liquid, any uh, or precious metals. So come back and we'll be ready to go filtering it. Because after we let it out, do this, I'm going to have to let it cool down. Uh, you need to uh, let this cool before you filter it. So it'll be a couple of hours time I'll be getting around to it, but you'll get to see it straight away. You don't have to, again, live through the boredom of it so you can see them there the little bits of shot that still you can see the bubbles you can see the way it's reacting with the heat um, and you can see up here the top layer where it's fallen to bits and it's coming out bubbling up and bits of it and then it's bubbling back down then it's going back up so it's reacting with it so the the tin is um you can see it's a quite vigorous reaction because of the heat um that i've applied to it uh, it does quicken it up. If I had melted this down into, um, rather than leaving it as a shot, if I'd melted it down and um, flattened it out or had it as a thinner layer, it would go a lot quicker. But because it was in the shot, it took a while to get going. So that's why um, it's taken me about 16 hours so far, if not slightly more. So um, usually I would have melted it, but I'll probably do another video at some stage and I'll show you where I melted instead, a different way of doing it. Uh, but just for this one, I just decided to throw the shot in as it was and go from there. So um, come back for the filtration after it's cooled down and uh, we bottle it up and that will be the video concluded. So check back and we're just straight on to the filtration. Okay. Okay guys, so uh, I'm ready for the filtration side of it now. So I have my little jar here, which will collect it. I've transferred the liquid into this. So we have it in here and we just need to filter it. So I have my filter ready here. So we just pop that in the top. I'm just gonna pop on uh, the gloves because we don't want any acid on the hands. And um, so we'll just pop on the gloves. So I've been still filtering away other bits and pieces of the mobile phones. If you watch some of my videos, you'll see that I've been working on mobile phones for the last while. Um, so they're filtering away. So again, you can see here in this filter, 
where I filter, as you can see the gold down the bottom. So I just need to dry that out and um, put it in with the rest of it uh, to treat it later with the uh, acaregia. So that's just what I've been doing as well. So we'll just filter this through. So that'll filter through fairly quick and it'll catch any of the little bits that's left over. I find these jars are a good jar um, that I've got these. I got these from, I think it's Yankee Candles is what I like to save them from, the Yankee Candles. Um, they're a good heat resistant jar. Um, so again, I can put them on the, the heat and they seem to, to, to work okay. Um, but you'd want to be there when you're doing it, just make sure that um, in case anything does crack or anything like that, that you're you're there by or you have a catch jar under them and stuff like that. It's just as always as a safety precaution, but I find them a good jar for mixing stuff into or for heating up as well. So we'll let that filter away and we'll come back when that's filtered. Okay, so the filtration now has been completed. As you can see from the filter, if I zoom in, you can see bits and pieces uh, in the filter. And what we're left with then is the um, the stannis in the little container. So we've got our stannis in here. So I'll put that into I'll pour that into a bottle, something similar to this bottle here, uh, for storage, and uh, I'll use that then um, as I need to for testing the um, gold in the liquid, just to see if there's any gold in the liquid when I'm. Um, doing further processes so that's how I make my stannis um, for testing the gold so um, thanks for watching guys please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel uh, share it out if you want or if you're into it and um, hit the like button so thanks guys and catch you on the next one and keep on looking for that gold